Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. I'd like to give a special shout out to the good folks over at LightroomKillerTips.com, your source for everything Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile, tips, tricks, cool stuff, news, and more. Uh, this one goes out to you guys because Scott Kelby wanted you to be one of the first to see what was new in Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom Web. So I've got a couple new things in Lightroom Web. And we'll talk about some Lightroom Mobile things and a couple tips and tricks along the way. So first and foremost, what I won't get a chance to show you, but I'll start off with so I don't forget. And that is, those of you who are on Lightroom Mobile Android, uh, you now have the same capabilities as what was introduced a little, uh, not long ago, for uh, iOS. And that is a, a raw workflow, meaning that if you have a device that shoots in raw, which actually Android was the first to do that, uh, then, you, of course, you can bring those raw images in. But now you've got the ability to bring in raw images from any device that you have that can connect to your Android device that can bring in raw files and edit those raw files directly in uh, Lightroom. And um, one of the things also that Android gives you the capability of doing is if you shot in raw um, with Lightroom on iOS, you transfer those images via Lightroom Mobile. But with Lightroom on Android, you can actually transfer those raw files with Lightroom Mobile, syncing them, or plugging your device into your computer. So um, Android users, yay, you got some more raw power, raw capabilities, and rejoice. All right, now for everyone else, let's talk about Lightroom Web first, and then we'll do a couple of tips and tricks for Lightroom Mobile on iOS and Android and anyone that's using it on a mobile device. So first and foremost, and this has been a popular request, let's get to it. Uh, this particular one has to do with if you're looking at Lightroom on the web, and for those of you that don't know about Lightroom on the web, it is simply go by going to lightroom.adobe.com, signing in with your Adobe ID, you'll see all your collections and all your photos that you have previously synced with Lightroom um, from the desktop. So with Lightroom Mobile. So you can go in. And you can add collections, you can add photos, you can do it all on the web. You can even edit your photos on the web. You can share collections, you can get feedback, you can, this is like the web version of Lightroom. Of course, it doesn't have all the capabilities, but it has a lot of capabilities and some secret ones, or hidden ones, I should say, that a lot of people may not know about. Let's start with one of the new ones. I've got an image here, it looks like they're the same, because they are. But this one's a JPEG and this one's a raw file. And in either case now, when I click on it, that'll bring up the uh, you know image so I can view it larger. I can also go in and get to the editing controls here. This would load it into the editor on the web and I'd get the same non-destructive edits that I have in Lightroom, Lightroom for mobile and Lightroom on the desktop. But you'll notice down here at the bottom on the download option, there's a new choice. Before you would have downloaded no matter what, the smart preview size JPEG. But now you also have the option of downloading the original sized file. So in this case, this is a 15 megabyte um, DNG raw file that came from my iPhone using the Lightroom for mobile on iOS to capture this in raw. Uh, so I can download that at any time. So if the raw file or or bigger version exists in Lightroom mobile, you will now be able to download it directly from the web browser on any computer that you're signed into. Uh, so that's a big, big uh, advantage for people that have wanted this and been asking for this uh, for, for months and months and months. So let's go, let's scroll down. I'm gonna go to another collection here. We're gonna show off one of my favorite features. I've got Lightroom, uh, or I've got a collection here called Recent Work. And in this Recent Work, um, I've got photos of portraits, I've got photos of travel, uh, some Iceland pictures here, some studio shots, and let's say that I want to uh, just share a few of these uh, with a friend or a few of these with a client, and I want to share the whole collection. Now, I can share the whole collection, and that's not new. That was there pretty much from day one once we introduced Lightroom for the web. So if I click share here, this will give me a custom link that I can send to anyone and that link will stay live to these photos. So if I add more photos to this collection, when they refresh that link, 
they will see more photos. If I take some photos out of this collection, those photos will disappear from that link. So this, this would literally be sharing it at a collection level. Anything you do in that collection, edit, add, or remove, will be reflected to whoever you give the URL out to. That's a great way to do it, and I've been doing it that way for a long time. But here's a new way to think about it. You can now select individual photos. So let's say that I want to select this one, this one, this one, and you could even shift click and select multiple ones. And I want to select for whatever reason, uh, this one. All right, so now I've selected a bunch of photos and you notice that you have the ability to click share on individual photos you've selected. So when I do this share, I get the first option, which is Lightroom Web Gallery. In other words, give me a link to just those photos. So I'll do that and I can call this project whatever I want. Um, so uh, sample, or we'll call it a sample of my work. And I can pick a cover for this. So I'll pick a nice uh, Iceland cover for that. And now I get some options. I can say whether or not they can uh, download the photos, show the metadata for the photos, or show the location for the photos. Since some of these have GPS location, I don't mind doing that. And none of these are shot in a private location where the GPS is private. I can even choose um, slideshow options for this. So once I'm done, I click save, and then I'm taken to a different, a slightly different environment. I get something that's brand new. First of all, I get the link. So that's the most important thing is that I get the custom link just for these photos to copy to the clipboard and be able to send to anyone any way I want. I can even post it to Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. I can play it so that the person will get the play icon as well. Now you'll notice that the cover photos there, sample of my work, but there's some new options. At text, We've never been able to do that before uh, from the web sharing capabilities. Not only can I add text, like just clicking add text, uh, I can say a sample from some of my favorite shots. Uh, I shoot mostly portraits and travel. Okay. Not only can I do that, but here's another one of those hidden benefits. If you hover between photos, look how they open up for you. So I can hover and I can say that, you know, these, let's, I even know this one's Iceland too, but let's say I want to start here and I can click the plus sign and add a section. So now you can divide your photos up into multiple sections uh, where it makes sense for you to do that. So I've got the first section with two photos, the second section with six photos, the last section with one photo. And now you can even add text in between. So I can say, for example, um, here, Iceland Adventure, my recent, uh, recent trip to Iceland, and blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. It's no fun watching me type. Okay, so you got that. And of course you can add those, uh, add that text section between each break in your sections. And you can break as many sections as you want. Now, when the person gets this URL, they get something custom for either the photos and what you're trying to explain or for them. You know, maybe you're separating out some photos for a specific client, a specific event, a wedding, whatever it is. And you're now saying, hey, take a look at just these for you. And here's some text explaining everything or what happened or what's going on. And of course, you can even uh, edit the cover and change that to a different color cover and edit your settings. So for example, maybe I want to use this one instead and we'll say done. And then that becomes the new uh, cover image. So very cool to be able to do that in Lightroom on the web. Okay, one more. Let's say I go back to my uh, recent work. So I'm going to, now there's two icons here, one for what you've shared on the web and the other one takes you back to your collections. So if I go back to recent work and I now say, Hey, I kind of like all of these. I want to start with this one. Oops, not edit it. I want to check it. There we go. I want to start with that one, hold the shift key down and go all the way down to the last one. And I'll select all the ones in between. Now I want to share all of these. You can share up to 50 images directly to your Adobe portfolio. 
What? You don't have an Adobe portfolio? Well, you could have an Adobe portfolio if you go to myportfolio.com. If you're a Creative Cloud member, you already have access to your own custom responsive web portfolio. So I've got mine set up at myportfolio.com already. I'm just going to go ahead and say, add this to my portfolio as a new project. The new project is going to be called Recent Work, or I could call it Recent Work Portfolio. And I can give it a cover image, whatever cover image I want to use. Uh, actually, I think I, oh, I think I will stick to the model one on this one. I can add it to my Behance if I want. And I can choose whether or not it contains adult con content, which it does not. So I'll hit continue. And it is now creating a project behind the scenes for that, um, for those set of photos to be a project on my portfolio. And this is what I love about it. One cloud technology, Lightroom for mobile and Lightroom web talking to another cloud technology, Adobe Portfolio or MyPortfolio.com without me having to do anything in between. I don't have to download anything. I don't have to upload anything. I don't have to export out JPEGs. I don't have to do any of that. Uh, a lot of those images were PSDs and or RAW files, and it's taking care of all of that stuff behind the scenes and making that project for me while I wait or go off and do other things. So while we're waiting, let's go off and do some other things. Uh, let's head over to, actually, oh, it just finished. I was going to say, let's head over to the iPad, but um, we're finished now, so we'll do it this way. All right, so it said, finish it up, meaning I'm going to take you over to my portfolio now so you can add the finishing touches to that portfolio image. It happened so fast, I didn't get a chance to go over and do some other things, but uh, here it is, and here it comes, and now um, this particular project, uh, has project info, has a masthead, has all the different things you can edit. You can rearrange the pictures in the order you want them in if you want them in a different order. Um, here, let me go to edit info so I can say what the info is for this project. Um, my most, I should say my most recent photos. All right. So I can say done, or add a period to that, then say done, and that will add that at the top there. And if I'm happy with it, I can now say go, update my portfolio. So sending from Lightroom Mobile, or Lightroom Web, I should say, Light, Lightroom on the web, Lightroom for web, <laughs> directly over to my portfolio, and now that's it. I can now view my portfolio and see it. Now, you always had the ability, by the way, in myportfolio.com to pull in images to create a new project from Lightroom uh, Mobile. But now you've got the ability to go both ways, to send it from Lightroom on the web or go to, directly to myportfolio.com and bring it in. So if you wanted to check out this work, it's terrywhite.myportfolio.com and that will show you um, the portfolio I've created on my portfolio. And like I said, this is a responsive design and you can of course create your own. You can also have your own domain. You don't have to live with myportfolio.com. If I can grab the edge of my browser window, that'd be nice. There we go. And we'll make that, a, uh, we'll just pull that in and show the responsiveness of it. So beautiful designs, templates and everything to choose from, totally customizable and build your portfolio today. Okay. so. Let's get back to those tips I was about to show you before the thing finished so quickly. All right, I'm going to pull up my iPad here and I'm going to show you a couple of um, maybe two or three of my favorite Lightroom mobile hidden gems, um, tips and tricks. So first and foremost, uh, I'm looking at a collection. This is my World Traveler collection. And of course, I'm seeing the thumbnails. And by the way, this is what collections look like. So I'm going to go to my World Traveler one. And I'm looking at these and I like it clean like this. Just show me the photos. But sometimes you need to see the information. So using two fingers, just tap on any one photo. Two finger tap gives you your date, time, size, and file name. Tap again. Gives you your camera info. So F56, 1250 for the second, ISO 200. Or your pick flags and your ratings. Um, 
comments and likes from like Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom on the web, which I don't have any on this one. And last but not least, turning it off. So just two finger taps cycles through all of those different options. All right, next one, and this one is one of my favorites, actually. We'll have to show it on an individual photo. Let's say I go to this photo of the Eiffel Tower here. Now, you probably know at this point that whether you're on iOS, Android, or iPad in this case, uh, which is iOS as well, you can toggle between two modes. You can toggle between the editing, which I'm in right now. So show me the film strip, show me the cropping, presets, edit, local adjustments at the bottom there. If I swipe to the right, then that takes me to my flagging and activity and comments, things to rate the photos. So I can go back and forth between those two. But if I'm in this mode, and I don't want to always have to tap on the right buttons, you've got the ability to do it in the actual image itself. And normally it's on one or the other. It's either on flagging or star rating. If you take one finger and hold it down on the photo, then you can choose between speed flagging speed rating, and my favorite option, which is hidden, speed review combined. So normally it's on one of these two, um, but I'm changing it to speed review combined. What does that do? That divides your, it virtually divides your photo in half left and right. On the left side, you've now got the ability to swipe up and down to choose a flag, pick flag, no flag, reject. Uh, I'll say no flag. And of course, if you move, just move over to the right side of the photo, just divide your photo mentally in half. On the right side of your photo, you can swipe up and down to choose your star ratings. So if I wanted that to be a four star or five star photo, just swipe up. And of course, once you're done with your rating, just swipe left or right to go to the next or previous photo and do the same thing. Left or right, pick flag, rating, pick flag, rating, reject, rating, whatever it is. Uh, so I love that ability. Uh, next one and last one. On a mobile device like an iPhone, an iPad, an Android, whatever it is, oftentimes you'll want to hand the device to someone so they can look at the photo, so they can navigate, they can do everything. But of course, they tap on a photo, you don't want them seeing all this, you don't want them accidentally rating, you definitely don't want them accidentally editing your photo, so you kind of cringe when it comes time to give them the actual uh, device. Well, you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, there's a three dot menu. And when I tap that menu, at the very bottom of that menu is the word present. When I tap present, what that will do is it will turn on a mode for this collection until I tap the X in the upper left corner that I'm in presentation mode, meaning turn off all the editing and rating and metadata and all that stuff. I don't want to see histograms. I don't want to see anything. Just show me the photos. So now the per you can hand the person the device once you put it in this mode. All they can do is swipe left, right, they can pinch and zoom, but they can't make any changes to your metadata or your photos. They can't do anything other than just look at them. When you And they can even play a slideshow. In the upper right corner, they can tap the play button and it will start cycling through the photos and giving you nice transitions and showing them the photos. So maybe you even put it in that mode first and they can go through it. Now, speaking of the slideshow, here's one more bonus hidden gem. While you're in present, that menu's still up there, but now that menu does something different. Now when you tap the three dot menu, you're changing your slideshow options. No transition, crossfade, wipe, flip, how many seconds the slide will be up, which is a slider. So you can choose whatever transition you want and how long the slide should stay open. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the uh, new features in Lightroom for web. The new features in Lightroom, or not new features, but some hidden gems in Lightroom for mobile. And of course, the new features in Lightroom for Android, Lightroom for mobile on Android, uh, revolving around the same raw workflow that we now have on iOS. So thanks for watching, and special thanks and shout out again to the folks at LightroomKillerTips.com. Great source for your Lightroom information. Cheers, have a great one, and we'll catch you on the next one.